Here's the truth about the Toronto Raptors in 2024. The German line of defense Dennis Schroeder led the 2023 NBA playoffs in defensive rating with the Lakers. In that same stat category, Jakob Pertl's 109.5 mark during the regular season after being traded from the Alamo City to the 6 was good enough to be tied with the two-time DPOY Rudy Gobert for number 6 among all centers. Despite hearing his name in constant, overbearing trade rumors, the Raptors may want to consider hanging on to Pascal Siakam, considering Spicy P was one of five players across the NBA to average at least 24 points, seven rebounds, and five assists simultaneously, only next to Luka, Giannis, Jokic, and LeBron. With the Raptor offense at Pascal's disposal to the fullest extent without having to worry about, with all due respect, the over-dribbling of Fred Van Vliet, who knows how the now officially definitive number one guy in Siakam, who's entering his prime at age 29, will lead the charge. 17 forwards ran four or more ball screens per game as the pick-and-roll ball handler last season. 19 forwards were the role man at least one possession per game last season. Only three players were on both lists. LeBron James, Jason Tatum, and Pascal Siakam. Before breaking down what that fact entails, along with the entire truth about Toronto, we are so close to 100k, and it would only be fitting if we hit that mark on a Raptor video, my hometown team. Splash that sub box, leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, and follow my other socials at Hoops. Whoever it is watching, you help make up the most loyal audience on YouTube, so I can't thank you enough. We'll get back to the positives, but there are some concerns for the 23-24 Raptors. After a monster rookie of the year season where we all expected him to morph into the second coming of Magic Johnson in year two, Scotty Barnes definitely struggled. According to The Athletic, Scotty's accuracy on quote-unquote floater range shots dropped from 50.2% in 21-22 to just 44.8% in 22-23. Meanwhile, on jumpers from 10 to 16 feet, he went from 39.8% as a rookie to just 29.7% as a sophomore. In terms of the team's top player in Siakam, Raptor fans were overreacting after Pascal's missed free throws in the play-in. However, the stats prove Siakam's not merely one of the top players in the league, but one of the most versatile. That adaptability will be valuable given a lot of new players are entering Toronto's equation this upcoming season. With Pascal's increased responsibility, in terms of creation offensively, his top-notch value should be more evident by the eye test from the season potentially through to another playoff run. To be fair to Spicy, I thought his superstar development last year, at least early on, was becoming fairly clear. For example, the stat lines he racked up even before the month of November had kicked off were a sight to behold. All before the first month of the season had ended, Siakam had dropped 31-12-6 in a game, 26-10-6 in another, 25-13 in another outing, 23-9-6 the next showing, plus games of 23-8-9, and 37-12-11, along with a performance where he posted 23-11-1. Across the season as a whole, Pascal posted the most 25-5-5 games in Raptor history, posted career highs in both points and assists per game, and was one of four players to post at least 1,500 points, 400 rebounds, and 400 assists. Like any franchise player, the Raptors' go-to guy currently has a lot of weight on his shoulders, especially given the rumors that have taken place this summer. Through all of it, and no matter what happens, mentality-wise, the Raptors have been able to count on Pascal Siakam to stay level-headed and confident. That says a lot to me. Hashtag keep spicy P in town. Don't dismiss the fact that the Raptors have one of the best lockdown defenders on their roster who can get lost in the shuffle with the likes of Pascal, Scotty, and now Grady. OG Ananobi's defensive fortitude can make up for a multitude of sins. Lest you forget, he was a crucial piece of the Raptors championship winning 2018-19 season before getting injured for the playoffs. Ananobi's efficiency on the end he makes a living off was only worse than Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Jimmy Butler, three of the best players at the small forward spot in the game. OG's stellar 22-23 campaign led to his first career steals championship and his first career All-NBA defensive team selection. Ananobi was second team all-defense 
next to Miami's Bam Adebayo, Memphis's Dylan Brooks, Golden State's Draymond Green, and Boston's Derek White. Ananobi also filled out his role offensively, where he made 40.6% of his catch-and-shoot three-pointers. It's that spot-up ability which will make OG a nice fit next to a high-volume drive-in disher intruder. Hopefully, we'll see Darko Rajakovic's offensive system feature pick-and-pops with Dennis and OG. I'm also hoping to see a lot of pick-and-roll possessions featuring Dennis and Siakam. Schroeder's quickness off the dribble and pass-first mantra all around fit much better he won't average 20-plus like Fred, but Dennis is debatably a better defensive player than Van Vliet, and his unselfishness regarding his leadership and communication skills just mesh more ideally with this mix of Raptor personalities and playstyles. Given the needed coaching switch up to the Serbian mastermind Darko Rajakovic, the signing of Schroeder, the fact that Ananobi and Siakam are in their primes, an expected bounce-back season from Barnes, Plus, the stable two-way production at center they can get from a high-volume rim protector in Pirtle, and I'd presume the starting lineup will be one of the better five-man units in the association. Amidst the upbeat hype, one of the concerns for this Toronto team will be, what will the Raptors get from their bench? In terms of 22-23, the answer to that question was almost nothing. Toronto finished 30th this past season in bench lineup offensive rating. Gary Trent Jr. fluctuated between the bench and starting five under Nurse, but setting his role firmly as sixth man would probably be the way to go. Outside of GTJ at times, the Raptors really didn't have much to work with personnel-wise when it came to their bench rotation. They were missing 2022 champion Otto Porter Jr. for practically the entire season, who's set to be back with the team in 23-24. The bench is where rookies Grady Dick and Marquis Noel could really make their presence felt. Additionally, Masai and Bobby made the savvy, under-talked-about decision to pick up Jalen McDaniels in free agency, who adds length and scoring off the ball. Precious Achua, like Barnes, had an off year in 22-23, but could also take a leap in his production as a developing young player. Under a new coach, the same thing can potentially be said for Malachi Flynn, despite many Raps fans having given up on the kid. Chris Boucher and Gary Trent should be tasked with being the staples off the bench and be given a big challenge from Coach Darko to fill out this role in a consistent and sustainable fashion. However, Based off the fact that I've made several videos that you can go watch right now on the Raptor Rookies, I think Brady and Marquise can really add an electric punch to both get the Raptors bench scoring well above the 30th ranked mark, and also to improve their free point percentage ranking. Toronto ranked down at number 28 in deep range efficiency in 22-23. So while they had a brutal loss in the play-in tournament, a year after getting two playoff wins with the Siakam main core and Barnes young core fueled group, basketball fans up north have a lot to be excited about. Let me know the Raptor factor you're looking forward to most in 2024 down below in the comments. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.